next presentation. Our colleague from the Faculty of Organizational Sciences, Zoran Shivarats, and the open source software for AI. Hello, and uh, thank you for inviting me today here. Uh, I'm coming from Open Source Software Development Center from Faculty of Organizational Sciences. And we've been doing some uh, involved in open source projects for a number of years, uh, mainly from uh, open source project grown uh, at uh, our faculty, which is educational tool for neural networks in Europe, and also uh, involved with the uh, uh, development of open source software development tools um, now, mostly NetBeans, now Apache NetBeans at the uh, Apache Software Foundation. So today, uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, the uh, open source tools uh, in the domain of artificial intelligence. I mean, AI is the hottest topic today. I think every software that is coming out is saying, yes, we are doing some kind of AI, almost like every software has uh, become AI. And uh, why is that uh, important? Next slide, please. Uh, because AI is providing uh, uh, many new uh, opportunities for next wave of intelligent automation in all the, all the domains. Uh, that means that uh, things, tasks that have been done by humans now can be done by software. And not only trivial tasks like uh, uh, making uh, simple uh, decisions or uh, calculations, but tasks that uh, in which human were necessarily involved. Uh, that leads uh, uh, from the business perspective to increased productivity and uh, to lower costs. And, and that's something that uh, businesses like uh, very much. And not, not only that, it opens uh, new opportunities for applications that were not uh, possible before for innovative application and we can say that it is being core of the so-called alg algorithmic age i heard that phrase algorithmic age a few days ago i think it is uh, describes very well what's going on uh, given the how much we use google and facebook and uh, all the other things that are happening next slide please so for start, I will give the quick overview of some uh, AI open source products that uh, uh, I have used and I uh, find important in the, today's ecosystem. And first of all, I would like to say that uh, today we are saying AI, but uh, mostly nowadays when we say AI, it is actually machine learning and deep learning. AI is a much uh, broader field than uh, machine learning and deep learning like one of uh, ml techniques but now when you say ai it comes down to machine learning because all, all the new things all the new innovations all the new products are mainly based on machine learning uh, and machine learning is, exists for a long time and some algorithms were available but suddenly they have became uh, very popular because the possibilities for their applications uh, have grown uh, so much thanks to technology that has been developed, uh, infrastructure, and some major breakthroughs in the uh, algorithm development. So, uh, also, there are many other uh, open source packages. Th these are not the only ones. This might not be the main one uh, which you should use. Uh, we heard today about many specialized toolkits for, for example, for speech recognition. Uh, and speech technology, uh, these are just general, uh, I would say, software libraries uh, to use uh, for you know, machine learning. One uh, of them that has been around for uh, some time and which is considered to be a kind of a standard, something that you uh, would take first when you are getting into the deep uh, machine learning and AI, it is a scikit-learn. Uh, it is a Python-based library which provides uh, a number of different uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, and uh, uh, it includes algorithms uh, uh, for uh, uh, classification, for regression, for uh, uh, data pre-processing, for dimensionality reduction. And not, not only that, it also includes uh, many uh, specialized uh, techniques for uh, model evaluation and uh, 
uh, tuning of the models. Uh, it is a kind of easy to use because it is based on Python uh, and it is based on entire Python ecosystem of uh, different libraries. So if you know Python, if you are a Python developer, then it is very easy to use. Uh, again, uh, if you don't have a background in uh, statistics and machine learning, if you're just looking at the code, it, it might be difficult at first. So, also it is easy to use and good to start with. I, I think you need some background before you take uh, uh, take it in your hands and start really understanding and using its potential. Uh, the next one, yes, and also to say, uh, it, uh, one of the main advantages of the scikit-learn is that it covers a number of different algorithms, uh, almost I, I can just say all, but uh, the majority of algorithms used in practice uh, are already implemented in scikit-learn. And you don't know, uh, in order to be able to use them, you don't have, you have to know all the details how, how, how to implement them. And I can say that scikit-learn has a very good documentation and lots of examples, which makes it very easy to get started with. Uh, but one thing to mention that scikit-learn is primarily oriented uh, towards something that's called uh, small, smaller amounts of data. So it is not designed to work with uh, big data, with large amounts of data, and it is not uh, designed, it does not give support for some advanced deep learning models and uh, uh, deep learning techniques that are available in other uh, frameworks. So it can be like a good thing to start with and to play with and to explore machine learning, to try things out, but uh, not something that you can, could use in a large scale production system. When it comes uh, to deep learning and uh, uh, big data, uh, then TensorFlow is the um, major player in that field. TensorFlow uh, comes from Google. Actually, it comes from University of Oxford and the spin-off DeepMind, uh, which were acquired by Google. And it is uh, uh, the major uh, deep learning framework out there. There are also others, not to mention uh, uh, PyTorch, the, which is built in, in Facebook. Uh, but uh, TensorFlow is, uh, he had a reputation like being more uh, focused on production, while PyTorch is maybe more uh, focusing on research things. Lately, these two things are coming together, but uh, like th that's the main difference between uh, those two. And it is interesting to say that uh, uh, yeah, TensorFlow uh, is uh, the core engine, computational engine. It is being written in C++, uh, C++ and that's where the uh, uh, huge power and speed comes from. But on the other hand, it, it provides API in Python, which makes it uh, very easy to, to use. So you don't have to be a C, C++ developer to play with TensorFlow. And the other thing, the first versions of ten, TensorFlow were more like uh, uh, designed for experts to do, do research and things like that. Um, and uh, uh, later, uh, community has created a very user-friendly API called Keras, which is now officially a part of TensorFlow, and it makes it very easy even for beginners in this field uh, to use uh, deep learning. Uh, another thing to mention, uh, one of the advantages of uh, TensorFlow is that uh, it has a large amount uh, of uh, pre-trained models, and uh, a lot of research is being uh, done using TensorFlow, and that makes it very easy to pick up some of the existing models and customize it for, for your needs. Uh, that is, all, uh, that is uh, the reason for that is because of the uh, possibility of using so-called uh, transfer learning, which is one of the main advantages of uh, deep learning. Uh, it is also interesting to know, uh, we will look in the next slides of the licenses used by, the, by these uh, frameworks, but it is uh, uh, important to know that also TensorFlow is open source project. It is being governed by Google. So I think the open source project governance is something that was not mentioned uh, today, which, which is important. So uh, scikit-learn 
is uh, governed by the psychic community, which is something I would say preferable. Uh, but uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, it is also important to mention the psychic project, entire project has evolved from the project that uh, was being carried out uh, as a part of Google Summer of Code. So it started in 2007 as a part of Google Summer of Code, like an open source initiative. And it is being mainly supported by Google. So it is interesting to, to, to note that the two major open source products that are based for innovation and uh, uh, technological development are actually controlled by Google. And the big uh, uh, difference compared to that and when it is co controlled by the community is uh, that that means that uh, Google company makes decisions about it. So people usually don't care about that. But uh, when uh, you have a new version, which is not compatible with the previous one, which happened with TensorFlow 2, which cut the compatibility with TensorFlow version 1, that's uh, many of them realize that things like that actually might be important. Uh, uh, the next uh, framework that, that I would like to mention is Apache Spark. Apache Spark is not uh, specifically an uh, uh, AI framework. It is a, a platform and framework for distributed data processing, and it allows you to, to process huge amounts of data on a cluster of computers, of many computers, uh, which can be a commodity hardware. It doesn't have to be a, 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 any kind of... A, specialized cluster or supercomputer uh, equipment. Uh, uh, something that, uh, and one of the in main innovations Spark brought to this distributed computing is that it, it is keeping data in memory. So it is in memory data, distributed data uh, processing, which makes it much faster than any other system that were uh, a, before it, which used we stored the data uh, on disk. Uh, the Spark is being uh, also has a support for machine learning. It has MLlib, Spark MLlib. So many algorithms can you can run out of the box distributed. So that's something that makes uh, much easier to uh, apply machine learning on a large scale. And also Spark can be used as a wrapper for other uh, AI frameworks. For example, it is being used in combination with, with TensorFlow. So you, you can run TensorFlow inside of the Spark nodes on individual computers and use Spark to dis distribute the data and collect the, design, uh, the results as an infrastructure for these kind of frameworks. So Spark uh, really m made uh, like a big uh, breakthrough in innovation in the uh, field of distributed computing. Uh, and today there are many other tools like Spark, but I think Spark was the first one that uh, gained uh, larger uh, attention. Uh, and uh, I think it is important to mention uh, that it is Apache Spark, so it is being managed by Apache Software Foundation. And that means when software comes to Apache Foundation, it means you're giving it to the community. And uh, it, it has been created at the, on the university, also as previous two projects, but now it is in the foundation and controlled by the community. I think that is a good model. And uh, it is not free software foundation. I don't know how many actually did the research. Uh, there are AI projects which are using uh, free uh, uh, GPL license, but uh, Apache license is different in the terms because it allows commercial use. Know, and you can uh, extend in a commercial way. Uh, the last uh, project that I would like to mention today uh, is Neurof. It is uh, a project that has evolved uh, at our faculty. It is an educational project for neural networks and uh, we're using it for teaching neural networks and students can experiment in, with it. And it is not so complex and so advanced as the previous uh, uh, I mentioned, but I think it is interesting to, to say that uh, uh, as we all already heard today, how open source can be very useful uh, for teaching because uh, students can actually dig into the code and see how something works and 
these educational tools usually have much simpler code that students can understand because it is very difficult to, uh, for students to understand some advanced uh, C++ code in TensorFlow. But when they look in a Java code in Europe, they get the idea uh, what's going on. It's like this. So uh, here is a brief comparison of uh, uh, this project that uh, we, we looked at. Uh, as you can see, Python uh, is uh, not just for this project, but for uh, machine learning in general, is the main and most adopted language for the uh, machine learning in AI. Also, uh, Python itself uh, does not provide good performance for uh, in, in the runtime. But thanks to good integration with uh, C++ and C, it is able to use uh, native libraries, which uh, provide uh, very high performance. Um, regarding licenses, uh, you can see that uh, for all these uh, uh, toolkits, Apache license is the uh, used not only for Scikit-Learn, which is used using BSD, but uh, I think they are all commercial friendly and can be uh, used for both education and commercial purposes. Uh, the main thing, if somebody wants to get into the machine learning in AI is what should, which one I should take? Uh, what should I start with? Uh, so it really depends uh, of your background knowledge. What do you already know? If you are good with Python, then scikit-learn might be a very good one to pick. Uh, also, you need some uh, previous understanding or some other things, but uh, uh, if you're a Java developer and you have not just started with basics, Europe might be uh, a best, better choice. Also, uh, when it comes to TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow got very good documentation and you can see at the TensorFlow learning uh, site that uh, you can easily run on, on a Jupyter notebook uh, or Google version of it called Collaboratory. So uh, I think that uh, the, there is no easy answer. What is the best choice? It depends uh, what is the best choice for, for you so you can take a look inside. Next slide, please. So here are a few uh, application examples that uh, show uh, how important uh, these uh, new technologies are for for everything for the most advanced uh, research for example there is a deep neural network called AlphaFold, uh, which was created uh, by uh, deep mind research team in google and they are being used for uh, uh, prediction of protein folding that that's a problem that's been very very uh, hard to solve for the last 50 years and this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, tools are being used in genetic research, in drug discovery, and uh, even decoding a, a human genome. Uh, next uh, is a good example is Deep Space Network used by NASA for like, space exploration. And it is uh, the biggest and the fastest uh, scientific research network. And it is uh, uh, made possible by using uh, Spark. It is using actually because it is a largely distributed system. So not only for uh, uh, scientific research and space exploration, uh, the machine learning is being used for booking home to recommend us hotels and the travel destinations, and also when we listen to the music uh, at Spotify. Like this. So uh, instead of some conclusion, I think you have a pretty good idea why is AI and ML important and what are the, the, the main softwares in, in that domain. And uh, just like a food for thought, think how would the internet look like if there were no Linux or Apache web server? Would we have internet today? Would it be like today like it is? And uh, if there were no Android, if it is not open source and no Java to make open source applications in the whole community. Would we have, how would mobile application look like? Would the ecosystem like we have today would be possible? So I think, is it possible to make a progress with AI? If there is, and uh, make uh, new applications 
and uh, of AI if there is no open source AI. I think it would not, it would be not be possible. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I will ask uh, if there are any questions coming from audience or online. Well, just a, you made a comparison in grid areas. Are there any information regarding uh, uh, not regarding the performances in terms of speed, but uh, more like which uh, how many resources resources do do they require? I mean, these different uh, libraries and uh, tools uh, for the purpose of uh, using it on a mobile device or something. Yes, uh, the, it very much depends on the size of your problem, how much data you are about to process. And uh, for example, TensorFlow has uh, very specialized uh, uh, distributions for mobile devices, so it can run on Android. And uh, definitely, if you're going for big data, you need Spark. You can you can go without it. And it, it but it is a distributed system. But uh, also. Uh, with TensorFlow, you, you can process a lot of data if you have a GPU. So they do require like a specialized hardware, and that's one of the limitations. It requires to have like a latest uh, NVIDIA cards and uh, uh, CUDA drivers and stuff like that. So the, the whole stack is complex, and it, it is one of the challenges. But uh, th that's why the, there are companies that are providing those uh, services from the cloud and solving that problem. Thank you. And you, you, if there are not, I'm just curious, uh, can we expect anything or you have something to share? Uh, you mentioned that uh, you have a, on your faculty, you have a center for open source software or something like that. Could, is there anything you can share with us and product or anything you're working on currently? Uh, yes, well, we are uh, mainly working on an AdBeans at the moment. Uh, so we are we have created the uh, educational tool based on admins to, to simplify uh, the software development environment because all the features you have on NetBeans and Eclipse and the uh, IntelliJ idea when a new programmer he doesn't comes he does don't know where to click so in order to eliminate the distraction we wanted to create a minimalistic environment which is again close to what they are going to be used in production. So not something like Blue Jail, which is like most like a toy, but something that uh, uh, follows the flow during the teaching. Yeah. And also, uh, I can say those are projects completed by some uh, master students in the previous semester. Uh, the other, the, the other project was to to translation of uh, NetBeans to Serbian language. So we have like a Serbian IDE. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you.